Well, Tuesday marks the 52nd anniversary of Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon. It will also be the second time in two weeks that a billionaire will take a self-funded trip to the edge of space. Last week, Richard Branson lifted off aboard his Virgin Galactic spacecraft. And now Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is set to blast off in a rocket built by his private space company, Blue Origin. Going along for the ride are Bezos' brother Mark, Oliver Damon, an 18-year-old who will become the youngest person ever in space, and a trailblazing aviator who many believe should have made the trip into space decades ago. Bring your wing up, not a girl. When I met Wally Funk back in 2013, her love of flight was infectious. Clap your hands, wiggle your wings. All right, now put your hand back on the wheel. Funk has spent her life among the clouds. She had her first flight lesson at age nine, became a licensed pilot by the age of 17, and has logged more than 19,000 flying hours. But her dream of going to space eluded her until now. We're gonna fly you up into space on the very first flight. That's your, your... <laughs> At the age of 82, Funk will be the oldest person to travel to space when she goes up on Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket on Tuesday. We open the hatch and you step outside. What's the first thing you say? I will say, honey, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'll give you <laughs> but her pathway to the stars was not an easy one. In the 1960s, while America's first astronauts were going through NASA's rigorous training, Funk was part of the Mercury 13, a group of 13 women who went through the same uncompromising exams. We had no idea what we were going through. We didn't know where it was taking us. X-raying all your body, every bone, every tooth, sticking water in your ears. I had to drink uh, radioactive water. So these were painful? strenuous, uncomfortable tests. Yes. The women of Mercury 13 met and often surpassed the results of the men. So you went through all these tests. Was there any question in your mind that you would become an astronaut? It was so. Yeah, I knew I would now. But the women would never get their chance. NASA required astronauts to be military test pilots, and the military at the time didn't allow women to fly. Decades later, American women did find their place at NASA. She definitely was a personal inspiration to me. Including retired astronaut Nicole Stott, who has spent more than 100 days in space. Do you kind of think about, like, her paving the way? Because it was some pretty ridiculous stuff. All of us as, as, as women astronauts that, that recognize that we don't get here by ourselves. You know, we are um, leveraging every day you know, kind of the awe and wonder that was put before us, the strength that was put before us. For Wally Funk, the dream never died. It's only now being realized. I'm willing. That is my quest. Most people would have given up by now. But I'm not. I, I love flying. That's my job. That's what I love. And I'm not a quitter. And she made it happen. So she's going up with the youngest, uh, the 18-year-old. Right. I just wonder what she is like putting in that young man's ear about what he can do with the rest of his life because she is just, oh, she is such an inspiration. Don't I'm, sure she'll, I'm sure she'll say a few things. <laughs> <laughs> don't, guessing. Yeah, don't give up on your dreams. She's yeah, like the exactly. prime example. That's, exactly That's beautiful, right. Michelle. You gotta love Wally. Yeah. Oh, 